you and the rest of you. How many of you never raise your hand in public? <laughs> Just want to include everybody. So here's the thing. The, 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 while I joined for the money, looking back on the experience, I realized it wasn't the money that was the big payoff. It was the person that I became in the process of going door to door. And what I realize now is that Southwestern really has done something magical. They have created a culture of discipline. This summer program, okay, where they work with college students, they, they were able to take perhaps some of the most least likely people to succeed in sales, a college student on their summer job, put them in one of the toughest sales environments imaginable, residential door-to-door, -door, and, and then train them to be incredibly successful. Well, after that, and I finished graduate school and did the World Championship of Public Speaking for Toastmasters, and I started speaking, that's when they came to me and said, hey, uh, it would be wonderful to take some of these principles out to the professional world and start doing research on other organizations. And that's when we started Southwestern Consulting. And so that's when we started going out and studying different organizations. Interestingly enough, we noticed the same characteristics. That successful teams, whether they're sports teams or, or nonprofit teams or government teams or, or you know education teams, they all exhibited some of the same characteristics where they had created a culture of discipline. And here's what was really empowering. We noticed that contrary to what most people think, the most disciplined people in the world don't like discipline more than anybody else. It's not like they were born with it. It's not like there's something different in their DNA. What we discovered is that it's just that they think differently about discipline. And this whole Take the Stairs book is turned quickly into this kind of worldwide phenomenon because it's just these seven key distinctions for how disciplined teams think differently from other teams. And people have realized that discipline isn't as hard as we think when we know how to think about it the right way. So what we're going to do this morning is I'm just going to run you through a couple of those principles just to kind of set the, set the foundation for you. Now, before we dive into those, I just want to make sure, though, that I don't skip over the message. Because my whole invitation to you today is, is I just want to invite you and encourage you and challenge you to simply start doing the things you don't want to do. Not out of some weird masochistic pleasure for pain, but because evidence suggests, research purports, and common sense corroborates the idea that that is the shortest, most guaranteed path to great teams, great leadership, and great results. It's not the shortcut stuff, it's not all the crazy stuff, but that is the truth to getting the results that, and causing the change that we all want, the change that, that made you sign up in the first place. And so hopefully we can just not, we're not trying to increase your motivation as much as we're trying to shift your mindset. The first principle is called the paradox principle of sacrifice. The paradox principle of sacrifice. In Colorado, where I grew up, we are world famous for the Rocky Mountains. And to the western part of the state, we have the great Rocky Mountains. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that our state is divided almost exactly in half. And to the eastern part of the state, is we have the great Kansas Plains, very flat. Because of that unique topographical landscape, Colorado is one of the only places in the world that has both buffalo and cows. And there's a great lesson, I think, to, to be learned for, for, for leaders and volunteers from studying the way that these two creatures respond to storms. When storms come, storms almost always brew from the west, and then they roll out towards the east. And what cows do is very natural. A cow can sense that a storm is coming from this direction, and so a cow will try to run away from the storm. The only problem with that is that if you know anything about cows, you know they're not real fast. So as the cows try to run away from the storm, the storm actually catches up with them quite quickly. Well, without knowing any better, the cows continue to try to outrun the storm. But instead of outrunning the storm, they actually run with the storm, maximizing the amount of pain and time and frustration they experience from that storm. Isn't that stupid? Humans 
do the same thing all the time. We spend so much of our lives constantly trying to avoid the inevitable challenges that come along with the circumstances that our very own choices have led us to be in. People who are in debt constantly try to find ways around paying their bills. People who are unhealthy constantly we make rationalizations for why it doesn't matter, it's not that big of a deal. We try to avoid the difficult but meaningful conversations that need to happen in our relationships. And the key insight that the ultra-performing leaders have made that not everybody else has necessarily is right here. They realize problems that are procrastinated on are only amplified. Problems procrastinated on are amplified. In other words, waiting always makes it worse. <laughs> what Buffalo do is really unique for the animal kingdom. Buffalo wait for the storm to cross right over the crest of the peak of the mountaintop. And as the storm rolls over the ridge, buffalo turn and charge directly into the storm. They run at the storm, and by running at the storm, they run straight through it, minimizing the amount of pain and time <coughs> and frustration they experience from that storm. Notice how it's the exact same storm. I think it is such a great message for all of us because all of us are dealing with the same <coughs> types of storms. Even though we're in different districts and different areas and different demographics and all that, and, and we're, we have, but, but so much of the, the conflicts are the same. Most of them are interpersonal relationships and a lot of them are related to communication, right? And, and, and even in our personal lives. We have some financial issue or some health-related struggle or some, some marriage battle or, or whatever. And, and we don't always get to choose whether or not we have storms. The only choice that we have is how we respond to those storms. And more specifically here, when we respond to those storms. This buffalo mentality is, is really representative of sort of a take-the-stairs mindset. Of a, of a take the stairs leader. That they're, they're kind of, it's kind of counter to what you think, but it's a great paradox. Uh, visually, it looks like this. This is what we call the pain paradox. It's meant to be a visual depiction of the process we all go through in our brain whenever we're evaluating choices. So, for example, whenever we're faced with a choice, there are two parts of our brain that start to weigh in on that decision. One part of our brain is firing in with sort of emotions, feelings, and impulses, encouraging us to make decisions based on what feels good, right? The other part of our brain starts to counterbalance that with logic and rationale, encouraging us to make decisions based on what we know we should be doing. And these two forces are in a constantly conflicting conundrum, pulling us back and forth in two opposite directions. Well, what most people do is most people will give in to the set of, set of forces that weighs heaviest on our heart in the short term. So let me ask you, friends, in the short term, which set of these forces do you think weighs heaviest on our heart? Are, are the logical, rational considerations of the choice or our emotions? Our emotions, right? Absolutely. And that's what most people do. Most of us make leadership decisions or personal decisions based upon short term and emotion. Based upon latest and loudest, where we're feeling the most pressure or what feels good, it's based on short-term and emotion. Now what the ultra-performing leaders did was a little bit different and a big thing to realize, it's not that they were exempt from those emotions. It's not like they didn't have those temptations. They did have the temptations. But what was different is they made a conscious choice in their thinking, knowing that in the long term, it was the logical, rational considerations of a choice that would determine, would set up their team for, for long-term success. And, and inside of this perspective, they have a longer-term perspective, and inside that perspective, the leader has the power to make a difficult decision despite the pressure they are feeling, perhaps, from the majority. And that is part of what makes the leader the leader. The paradox principle simply stated is this. Easy, short-term choices <coughs> lead to difficult, long-term consequences. Meanwhile, difficult, short-term choices lead to easy, long-term consequences. <coughs> And I know the pressure of being the leader. I, I, I know people come at you and they're just emotional and sometimes nasty and mean, telling you what they are absolutely 